Hi there, my name is Evelyn Weiss. I'm a coaching course creator and this year so far I have done three launches. All of them were at least one time six figures, two of them was multiple times six figures and I thought I'll quickly record this video for you, walking you through what I think is the number one reason why I'm able to launch so successfully and I'll show you my exact numbers and I'll take you behind the scenes right now. Okay, so without further ado, let me quickly jump into the numbers. So I want to open my Stripe account for you. Uh, let me quickly refresh the page so you can see this. This is my actual dashboard. So here you can see all of this is dynamic. And this was the first launch here, second, and the third launch, which is the, was the most successful one and the one that I'll be taking you through right now. So before I'm taking you through this and my actual launch debrief dashboard, I want to tell you the number one secret because you need to know about this before you even understand like what is this dashboard good for. So a launch debrief is basically after a launch that you track all your stats and track all your thoughts like also already during the launch and you debrief what worked well, what didn't work well, so you can prepare for the next launch. And this is actually the secret sauce behind those three um, six figure launches is that I've been doing exactly that ever since my first launch. I just wrote, set down the time, tracked all the relevant numbers, which are the ones that I'm sharing with you in a second, and reflected on what I can do better next time. And it sounds simple, but it's really that easy. My first launch, I um, pre-sold in a Facebook group that I grew from zero to a thousand members using Facebook ads, and I sold 10 spots for my back then three months beta group, uh, beta one-to-one -one coaching package for 997. So my first launch was actually kind of good. It was a 10k launch. My second launch, when I tried to sell it again, or thought I want to sell it again, and I realized I actually don't want to sell high ticket. I did the launch, and then I just sold the replace of the actual launch for a really low price. And you could have considered that a total flop for the amount of work that was put in and the ads that I was running. I was actually in like a net negative, but I didn't give up from that, right? And I bounced back, and the launch after this kind of Failed launch uh, was the first one that I considered good and I want to show you because back then you can see 88 weeks ago I documented the stats and I had uh, 25 people joining the light version of my uh, $49 membership and one person joining the pro version of my membership. That was a total. Um, I spent around $340 on ads. I made an immediate return of, or I made immediate sales of $1,969. And that was a 5.8 return on my ad spend. And my customer lifetime value there was adding up to close to $24,000. So how long people on average stayed in the membership, right? But all the cash collected was under $2,000. And I was wildly happy with these results, right? And if you think about this is just 1.7 years ago. So not even two years ago. This time on this launch, on the last launch that I'll be walking you through, I actually launched my flagship program, which is coaching mini membership method that helps people to productize their knowledge into a low ticket online membership. And, you know, everything from the conceptualization, the idea, creating the actual membership, launching the actual membership and filling it up with funnels and Facebook ads, which is what I did to grow, grow my memberships to right now. I need to show you the full. Like year to date, all time, how many active members we have. So you can see 6,000 paying monthly members. So I teach all of this in there and it's $777 for the year or 12 payments of $97 or three payments of $297. So this is what I launched right now. And I launched this exactly one year ago. And on that launch one year ago, I made $17,000. So you can also see from 17000 to 375,000 is a huge jump and there was just one year difference. So if you have launched in the past and it failed, or if you were disappointed with your results, if you consistently debrief well, and if you keep doing it, eventually your numbers will, you know, add up and you'll see not just a little bit better results, but eventually if you do this very diligently, drastically better results. So what are the things that you, you need to pay attention to, right? What are the numbers that you actually want to look into? So let me zoom in here a little bit and walk you through the pillars. One thing that I like to look at is my launch duration and how long, how much time did I spend in pre-launch nurturing, right? Putting out 
really really helpful instagram posts youtube videos facebook posts and um emails uh, i show you my weekly launch uh weekly content posting schedule so i post on average divided by all platforms between 80 to 100 pieces of content per week and that sounds a lot but some of them are just uh, really short like testimonial snippets right i get a lot of social proof through my members i have wins that I can share multiple times a day so a lot of not all of them are like very very detailed content posts like this one up here so I also do very detailed like breakdowns of strategies and content posts like this one but definitely not every piece of content is like that but yeah you would want to spend significant time in pre-launch I recommend at least 30 days and if you are a member you uh, of funds and ads pro or coaching mini membership method you also have access to our actual pre-launch content Trello board that shows you how, what I consider now actually the minimum of nurturing and connecting with your audience before you go into launch. So this is really important. How long have you been in pre-launch? How much value have you provided? I like to run ads nine days prior to the launch to fill up my launch. So I launch in Facebook pop-up groups and live stream on a daily basis. The actual launch was three days of live stream and the, the group where I was then serving and answering questions was open for a total of seven days. So I just quickly want to show you the group that is now paused. So here you can see this is this was the group that was now paused and I was in there a, a total of seven days answering questions and serving in addition to three days where I was live. And then the pitch phase and closed door phase was five days. So I was pitching on the second day and then it was five days until the doors closed. So here you can see um, what I'm also tracking is when did people buy? This is the program painful. This is three months. This is 12 months. And here you can see uh, that the majority of people, of course, kind of buys on the last days. And here we had on the, on the day after the last day, we had 13 sales. That was just people where I wasn't able to get back on time um, when they had like specific scenarios or questions that they asked. So we made a little bit of an exception because if they already sent an email or asked a question in a group and then because we had so many requests, I wasn't able, you know, to, to tell them on time or some had, you know, issues um, with their bank or something. So we, we had some exceptions kind of trickle in. Uh, and then here you can see the total percentage of when people bought. So day before closing and closing day, a total of over um, 57%. So the majority is happening like way back in your lounge, which is also why I think it's so important for you to remember that you need to keep your energy high at all times. Many people after they pitch, so which was day two for me, and they have low signups. So for me these days, if you consider the total amount of signups, right? So total amount of signups here was 330. 16 is considered low for me, right? At these days, if I would feel like, or if I didn't know that the majority of sales will come in on the last day, I will feel defeated at this point, right? When every, when in reality, everything is going well. So you need to remind yourself that the majority of sales will come in on the last day and you will need to be, stay positive and keep your energy high throughout the lounge. So then you can see here the total sales, the total conversion value. Um, because, you know, sales is not equal conversion value because the payment plans, they have a higher conversion value, of course, than what you collect immediately. So these, the immediate sales was 163,000 and the total conversion value was 314,000. And then I also um, offered a special deal for people to um, sign up for a discounted price to our own funnel system. So we have our own WordPress-based one-time payment, uh, full funnel solution, including memberships and all my winning funnels. And we gave people the exclusive opportunity to buy it because it was in beta and people could sneak in one time at the beta price, which a total of 205 people did. So with that sales volume, it added up to 375,000. Here you can see how many people joined the challenge group in total. So obviously we we want to grow our audience in advance and we also want to run ads because the more people we have in our lounge, the more potential sales we can make. Here you can see I send a total of 15 emails, or sorry, 13 emails during the lounge. And then you can see 
I have nurtured my list really, really well before the launch. So I'm always focused on providing value, which is why I have an average open rate of 40% on my email list. And here you can see that was also consistently really, really high throughout the launch. Then you can see that I track my click rate on my emails to get an idea of how well my content is performing. And here you can see uh, tracking your numbers like this also gives you a really good idea uh, about what emails you can work on. So here you can see I had two emails that had comparatively low click rates. So for my next launch, I'm gonna, going to look into these emails and I'm going to try to optimize them. Everything else actually is, is really benchmark for me. So I just need to keep doing the same thing that worked really well. Then here you can see the group activity. Um, there's a, you can export the stats from Facebook. And then you can see one thing that I did throughout the launch was I was keep sending emails to people to join the launch group. And you can see the, the group grew by over 500 members during the launch even. So that was a really good idea. Right into when you have the numbers in front of you, you can, it's, it's really good to see um, if what you do is actually working. So I'll keep doing that in the future. And there you can also see how engaged it was. And I personally like to track when people were most active because this was um, in the past, I would pitch on the last day of the launch, but I actually saw that day two of launches is more, are more engaged. And when I did a five day launch, I saw that after day three, the engagement rates completely dropped, which is why I'm now only doing three day launches because why would I spend even more time? You know, we showed up on average like three to four hours a day live. Why would I do more of that if people actually drop off and not consume it anymore? I can condense it to three days. It's more manageable for me. It allows me to launch more often without burning out. And obviously, it's also better for people because five days seem to be too long based on the engagement drop-off. So that also was true again in this launch that day two was the most engaged day, which is why I pitched on that day. Then you can also see uh, I collect during every launch, I collect screenshots, positive feedback on the launch that I can then use for the sign up page and the ads for the next launch. Obviously, I'm making people anonymous. This is just for internal uh, tracking. And then we have how many people watch the sales page and in during the launch time and how well the sales page converted. So the sales page converted at 15%, which is really, really high. So everything 5% plus is actually healthy. Um, everything above 10% is really good. My conversion rate from the group was 10%. So that was also really good. And then here you can see my ad KPIs. So I had quite a bit of learning here. Uh, during the launch, I had to spend significantly more for an email address for a lead than in pre-launch. But I spent way too little money in pre-launch, which ultimately cost me a lot of money after. So those numbers should be at least switched. And I know that next time um, prior to the launch, I will spend a lot more on list growth ads. And then, um, you know, I will still, because it was still profitable, I will still keep a budget of around, for the next launch, I think I will be running with ten to $15,000 just to fill up the launch. Um, because I can see now that, that this is uh, the return, the immediate return was a 19x ROAS return on ad spend considering even the pre-launch ads. So of course I'm doing more of that, but I, I think I will be spending probably 15 here, but at least 30 to 40 here. <laughs> I, I spent way, way, way too little here. It would have made a lot of sense to spend significantly more. And I also up, upped this spend a lot. And then I wrote down areas of improvement. So this is what you'd want to do. Really sit down, uh, say, what can I do? better in pre-launch? What can I do better for the ads? One mistake, for example, that I made for the ads was as soon as I had the launch ads out, um, I didn't check that, but in the funnels, the, this is an always open program, right? So people can join at any time, not only during the launch. And what happened is as soon as I put out the launch ads, people were starting to hold back purchases because they were, of course, rightfully assuming that there's a special launch deal. And I kept spending $800 a day in the week leading up to the launch and during the launch on direct conversion ads to the program when people were holding back purchases. So I mismanaged about $7,000 here, which on, you know, for the next launch, I'll just decrease that budget more aggressively prior to the launch and shift it into the launch ads. So 
it's all like really good learning then about the lounge in general. And there you would want to think about uh, your content, the group itself, how you pitched and what you can improve there. So I, for example, I spent a lot of time creating the lounge content because my concept is value lounge. I want my launch to be so good that others would sell it as a course because I'm also at the end, I put it in my mini membership. So I also have the $7 membership, which is code proof hub. And in here, I put all the replays from the lounge because I know that a lot of people who join Coach Group Hub are really interested in um, starting a membership as well because they see me doing it very successfully. So for me, the lounge was also a way of creating content for Coach Group Hub. And I also turned this into a front end offer after. So I work with things that work with something that's called option funnel. So I will give people the op option to pay uh, to buy the lounge replays and resources we had workbooks and all kinds of things on every single day. So I give people the option to buy this for $9 or get it for free when joining the Coach Growth Hub that obviously has like a lot of more content and support uh, and everything included. So I address this from a, I'm actually creating a course. I'm not selling something angle and it worked really well for me. What I didn't do so well was I, I still hate to pitch. So I was kind of not preparing that at all. And I was not prepping it. And on the last day, I was like kind of sneaking it in. And then on, uh, on the second day and on the last day as well. And I think that I have to more think if I'm not presenting my offer well, I'm also doing students at this service. So I, for the next time, I need to practice it better. And, you know, co considerations like this, really observing yourself, observing how you show up, um, mindfully uh, looking... Am I showing up? Do I have a limiting belief here? Am I holding my back? Is there some sort of self-sabotage? So really observing yourself helps a lot. What can you do better on the email? So there you need to analyze the numbers. What can you do better on your sales page? Your offer, the onboarding process of new students after. And if you work with a team, you know, what, what can you do? What went well with your team? What didn't uh, go well? What can you do better next time? So I have always what worked well, what didn't work well. And then I had some additional questions that I would also encourage you to ask yourself after every lounge, which is, how did I feel during the lounge? What messages resonated particularly well with my audience, right? So every lounge, every time we in interact with our audience is an opportunity to learn um, about what kind of messaging works and what we need to tell people for them to understand what we try to convey. So that it should also be a constant learning about your messaging. What unexpected questions did you have? So for the next lounge, I already know that I want to work with breakout trainings uh, to address those. Um, and then what topics got people especially excited. Uh, and here, the visualization of the membership with the um, SLO offers and ChatGPT, how I use that to help them find the niche and map out the elevator pitch for the membership resonated really well. So um, this was just a very quick rundown of how I'm looking at those things. If you are a Funnels Ads Pro member or Coaching Mini Membership member, a student, you have all my thoughts and all the details here. But basically just doing this work consistently and deliberately is what got me to this place of having multiple six-figure launches because your, your launch success is actually not made in, in the launch, right? There, of course, it's a matter of your energy, right? If you can hold it high, um, if you can support people really well, but the majority of your success is made prior. How well did you nurture before? How much time did you spend in uh, optimizing your offer and your sales page? How much time did you spend writing those emails that will, that will come during the launch? How much time did you spend on the actual launch content to make it really, really valuable for people? Uh, all of those things, right, will ultimately determine the success. So what, during those days of your launch, you, you can just deliver. But all the systems, all the prep work you did before, all the internal work you did before, all the high quality thinking is what will actually get paid. So I highly encourage you to think about learning the skill super deliberately. And I hope I was able with this video to show you the potential of what can happen if you take this really, really seriously. All right, that's it for now. See you in the next one.